Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to talk about the cost of cloud and how we can help organizations try and keep those costs down to a minimum so that we are not over committing to things and we are looking for the best type of value in these environments. I'm going to use Microsoft Azure as the context because that is the cloud platform that I know the best. But a lot of these things can be converted to AWS and GCP. A lot of these features are shared. So a lot of cloud platforms will have the same type of thing just named differently within those cloud platforms. So I'll try and be broad, but my context will be around Microsoft Azure. So when organizations move into the cloud, they often move in with a very loose budget because at the time there's a lot of budget in spending because they're going through a transition. And there's not always a lot of thought that's put into how much things cost and how you can do it a bit cheaper. So what usually happens is after a few months and they get their first bill, then there's often bill shock and they take it to the business and the business is very quick to turn around and say, how come this is costing so much? How can we make it cheaper? Otherwise, we're going to have to go back on prem. So in this video, let's go through some of the things you can do before you get to that stage that will help you keep those costs down and make you look good in front of the business. So the first thing is virtual machines, so compute. These are often the highest cost in any cloud platform. The value that they bring is immense because it allows you to bring your virtual machines from on-prem into a cloud platform, but often it can become very expensive. So there is a few things that we can do to make sure that we are not over committing and not overspending on those virtual machines in any platform. First thing is right sizing those virtual machines. So making sure that you don't have eight CPUs when you can go with two making sure that you don't have 32 gigabytes of memory when you can go with 16. Sometimes you can get away with using a standard type of disk for the Windows operating system, whereas a lot of people are committing straight away to premium. What I can suggest is move it to a VM in the cloud platform that has the same amount of vCPU and the same amount of memory as it had on premises. And then after a few weeks, try and tweak it. So go in there and actually see, is it actually using a lot of the memory? Is it actually using a lot of the CPU? And if it's not, try and downsize it. Try and bring it down a level and, and then keep it running like that for another couple of weeks and see how you go. The next one is shutting down VMs. So you can save a lot of money in the environment if you just shut down VMs when they're not in use. Now we have a lot of static workloads, things like domain controllers, things like SCCM, things like shared services where they will be accessed by many different applications and many different users. Those just have to be static. So we're not going to shut those down and start them up whenever we need to. We'll get to that in the next section. When it comes to things like dev environments or maybe an application that is only used at certain times of the day or maybe something that's a bit flexible, you can put these on some type of shutdown and startup schedule. You can do a bit of scripting. You can use the Azure portal to actually help you out to shut them down at a certain time. You can even go as far as shutting them down automatically at 6 p.m. after Microsoft sends a email to all the owners of that VM and asks them if it's okay to shut down. If no one responds, then it shuts it down. Nice and easy, it's a very easy way to save yourself some money in any cloud platform. Imagine just having your compute off 12 hours a day. There's half a day saving there every day. Back to the static VMs. If you are going to have static VMs like domain controllers and shared services like SCCM and all those type of Windows services and maybe some applications that are just static always on, set reserved instances. So what reserved instances is, it's a Microsoft Azure resource, but there is equivalent in other platforms. Microsoft Azure offer reserved instances. And what reserved instances do is it lets you commit to this type of compute or this type of VM for one or three years. So let's say if you commit to having that VM running for the next year, you can save something like 30% on the cost if you just commit to it. And if you want to save even more, you can commit to three years and you can save sometimes 60% of the cost. You can do the same with storage, but I find that it's a lot less used because you have to reserve a large block of storage. So basically what you're doing is you're just going to Microsoft Azure and saying, I will be here for the next one or three years using this compute, give me a discount on it. All right, so the next thing is storage. Storage adds up very quickly in any cloud platform. I'm going to talk about Microsoft Azure again because that's what I know best. But the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go and you're going to remove any unnecessary data. So let's say, for example, you've just done a migration. You've migrated a whole bunch of VMs from on-premises to Microsoft Azure. You need to now go and make sure that you've deleted all that replicated data. Otherwise, it's just sitting there in a storage account and you're not using it, but it's just adding up. So make sure that you're going through your storage accounts and making sure that you're removing everything that's in there that is not in use make sure you're using the right storage tiers so use hot when you're using hot data so the things that you're 
writing and reading very, very often. Make sure that you're using hot, that's the most expensive. But if you're not, if you're using something to just maybe store something that's accessed every now and then, then use cool storage or maybe even archive storage if you really don't need it. Just make sure that you really understand what the process is to get it out of that storage if you need to, because often the cost comes when you're actually pulling that data back out of archive storage. But you go through all of your storage, make sure that you don't have things that are not being used and make sure that if things are being used, they're not stored in a hot tier or even a cool tier, maybe they should be an archive tier. Wherever possible, try and use things like Azure Files and maybe even SharePoint Online if you have the licensing to store files that are commonly shared. I don't think that using Azure storage accounts and blobs is the most efficient way to have things stored. It's definitely not the cheapest. So. Think about that, think about moving things to OneDrive for Business or SharePoint Online if you're already paying for the licenses. Backups and DR. So backups and DR can get very expensive in any cloud platform. So what we need to do is to make sure that we are not doing things that we don't need to. So maybe having something like backups that are geo-redundant when they really don't need to be. And I say that because a lot of people don't know their organization's compliance requirements for backups. So make sure that you are only doing what you need to do and not over committing. Use tiered type of backup. So make sure that you are only storing the data that you need to in cool storage and hot storage and archive storage. Make sure that you actually have some type of tiering system that will move it along and that something is controlling that data to make sure that backups from 10 years ago aren't sitting in hot storage. View your retention. Maybe you have a retention period set to something infinite, but you only need three years worth of backup data or seven years worth of backup data, which is what we commonly see. So go in, look at all your backup policies, make sure that you haven't overcommitted to retention because if you don't need to keep it, then you're just paying for it for no reason. When you're talking about Azure Recovery Services Vault, there is two options. There is the locally redundant storage and the geo-redundant storage. If you don't need geo-redundant storage, make sure you're not paying for geo-redundant storage because it can be very expensive compared to locally redundant storage. And go and make sure that you are not using geo-redundant storage if you don't need to. The use of Azure policy can stop things like VM sprawl and it can stop you from spinning up certain types of resources. So we can use Azure policy to actually help us manage costs in something like Microsoft Azure. We can stop the use of resources in certain locations. Azure policy will let you set up some policies in the subscription that will make sure that people cannot set up certain things that are going to cost too much or they're going to cost too much when they're running in a certain region. Have a look at the Azure policies, see all the built-in ones and see what you can actually restrict and make sure that your administrators and even your devs sometimes aren't going in and just spinning up whatever they want, whenever they want because these will often add up very quickly and that'll probably get blamed on IT as usual. Also, if you're doing things like cross-charging, so if you are the IT team and you're actually charging the development team to run certain workloads, then make sure that you're using something like Azure Tagging or some type of tagging system that is going to let you actually mark those certain resources as owned by the development team. So make sure they actually have a way that you can actually total their costs every month and send it on to them. The last thing you want to happen is your CIO to come to you and ask you why you have no idea what's going on in the dev environment, even though it's in Microsoft Azure. Dev environments. Okay, dev environments is something that we come across a lot. Environments where devs will have full access to everything, so we often do it in a separate subscription. They'll have separate costs to everything, but it'll be back to the same billing. So make sure that if you have these type of dev environments that they are actually maintaining them well so that you are making sure that they're spinning things down when they're not in use. They're only spinning up certain types of resources. They're making sure that they're adding all their tags into the resource so that you can build them for it later and make sure that they aren't just making the environment insecure. So put some policy and governance and compliance in place that will also manage cost and security and whatnot. And lastly today we're going to talk about licensing. Licensing in Microsoft Azure is quite simplified compared to previous agreements. So if you are actually using the licensing in Microsoft Azure, so when you're actually spinning up a virtual machine or a SQL server or something like that, make sure that you are not paying for your licensing twice. A lot of customers move into Microsoft Azure and they continue to pay their previous agreements for licensing that they had prior to being in cloud. And then they're actually paying for licenses twice. So they'll be paying for the SQL Server in their agreement and they're also paying for their SQL Server in Microsoft Azure. So if you are doing that, if you have pre-purchased a whole bunch of licenses on-prem, then make sure that you go in and you actually turn on Ahub on all those resources. Ahub is Azure Hybrid Use Benefit 
and basically it's you telling Microsoft Azure that hey I have licenses on-prem don't charge me for them in Microsoft Azure don't go and turn it on without having license in there because you'll get in lots of trouble Microsoft do audit licensing all the time I hope that helps I hope that helps you keep the budget down in any type of cloud platform you can apply all of those basics to any type of cloud platform basically but let's make sure that we are not over committing because too often I see customers that are just spending way too much in any cloud platform thanks for joining me I'll see you next time